The components used in irrigation control systems, particularly those in decoders, are very vulnerable to voltage surges. Surges can come from lightning strikes or source surges. Even in areas where there is little lightning activity, a power surge can cause significant damage. Proper grounding is required for any surge protection to work. Good grounding dissipates the surge to a path to ground. The grounding path has less impedance than the path through the irrigation equipment. Redirecting the surge to the ground protects the equipment. Poor grounding frequently leads to unnecessary component failures, system downtime, and customer complaints. Since lightning and surge damage is never covered by manufacturer warranty, it is in the installer's best interest to follow these guidelines to install the most resilient system. Depending on the manufacturer and the size of the system, several different methods of grounding might be used. Ground rods are the most familiar method of grounding. These are 5 8 inch in diameter and typically 8 feet, 10 feet, or 12 feet long. Ground rods are driven into the soil to produce good contact. A fully buried 10-foot ground rod will have about 230 square inches of soil contact. The more soil contact, the lower the impedance of the grounding circuit. This lower impedance attracts the surge and protects the system. Ground rods should be installed a minimum of 10 feet from the wiring network. Connection of the grounding wire to the ground rod can be with a simple ground clamp or with a CAD weld connector. For a permanent installation, a CAD weld connection is recommended. These connectors are permanently welded with a special cap connector that is fused with an exothermic chemical reaction. A CAD weld igniter is required to install. Different connectors are available for different types and quantities of ground wires. While ground rods may be adequate for protecting a single controller, ground plates are more often used with decoder-based systems. A 4-inch by 96-inch grounding plate has triple the surface contact area of a ground rod, resulting in much greater inductance. Ground plates are easily installed in a mechanically dug trench, they are supplied with an insulated copper conductor. Where necessary, the backfill soil around the ground plate can easily be enhanced with Regency ground enhancing material to achieve greater conductivity. Soils that are more porous or rocky often require this. When installed in the recommended amount based on soil conditions, GEM maintains constant resistance for the life of the system. It is supplied in 25 pound bags. Contact the factory for calculation information. Install all grounding circuit components in straight lines to minimize impedance and at a right angle to the two-wire path. Where necessary, make ground wire bends gradually rather than sharp turns. An electrical sweep L is a good guide for the shape of changes in direction. Surges will follow the clearest path. Each grounding rod or plate has a defined sphere of influence. Avoid placing devices where they share the same soil to dissipate surges. Follow manufacturer guidelines for spacing the grounding equipment from the two-wire path and the distance between grounding devices. Installing grounding equipment in the irrigated area is recommended as the soil will stay more uniformly moist, which aids in conductivity. When multiple ground points are interconnected with a bare copper conductor, this is known as bonding. The strength and unity of the grounding network is enhanced by bonding. Where permitted by manufacturer specifications, bonding is recommended. Shielding involves installation of a shallowly installed bare copper conductor above the two-wire path to intercept lightning away from the decoder system wiring grid. Some manufacturers require installation of lightning arresters as part of their decoder systems. Do not mistake these as a substitute for grounding. Their function is to limit the spread of a surge in a system where the decoders themselves do not have onboard surge protection. They still require a grounding grid to dissipate surges. Newly installed grounding equipment may not provide a meaningful resistance reading when first installed because it has not achieved good soil contact. Wait four to six weeks for the soil to settle. Aim for the grounding system to have the lowest possible electrical resistance when tested. 
Most manufacturers recommend a maximum resistance of 25 ohms. The lower, the better. Use a megameter to test the earth ground resistance of each grounding device. Grounding equipment should be tested annually or after major repairs to make sure maximum resistance values are not exceeded. To aid in the design and installation of decoder-based irrigation systems, Regency Wire and Cable offers a free handbook that details electrical system best practices and the best components to achieve them. Download a free copy at www.regencywire.com.